Hi guys! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So our topic for today is the equation of the circle and graphing circles using GeoGebra. Okay, so what is the equation of the circle? So it has two forms, the standard and the general. So here's the standard form where the center is H and K and the radius is R, while this is the general form of the circle where the numerical coefficients of x squared and y squared must be equal. Okay, so now we're going to convert the standard form to general form. Okay, so this is the standard form and another example of a standard form. So what are we going to do is to convert it into the general form. So keep in mind that we need to use the concepts of the square of the binomial in order to perform each of the squares. So what are we going to do is to apply this concept. So what will happen is x squared to find the square of x, then to find the square of 7, which will be 49. Then we're going to find the square the first term and the last term as well. So what are we going to do to find the middle term is since the middle sign is negative, so we're going to write the negative, then what are we going to do is to multiply two with seven and x. So it will become 14 x. Then what are we going to do here is to multiply y with one with two, so it will be two y. So what are we going to do here is we're going to arrange according to the variables. So we're going to copy the rest. Okay, so we're going to add 49 with 1, so it will become 50. Then, in order to make the right-hand side 0, what are we going to do is we're going to subtract both sides by 4. Since the number at the right-hand side is 4. So what did I do here is x squared minus 2 times x times 7 plus 7 squared. Then for here, it will be y squared plus 2 times y times 1 plus 1 squared. Okay, that's why it turn out to be like this, okay? So now we're going to move to the next example. So now we're going to convert the general form to standard form. So this is the example of the general form. So what are we going to do is to convert it into the standard form. We're going to copy this form of the circle. So all we have to do is we're going to complete the square for x squared plus 6x. So what are we going to do is to divide 6 with 2, then find the square. Then what are we going to do is to complete the square for y squared minus 4y. So y squared minus 4y, then we're going to add plus, then... Divide the coefficient for with 2, then find the square. Then copy the minus 23. So what will happen to the right-hand side is we're going to copy this because we're going to add these numbers on both sides. 
So what we did is the addition property of equality. However, it has, let's say, multifunctional. Okay, so what are we going to do here is to simplify inside the parentheses. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Then what will happen here is 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, so we're going to simplify everything inside the parentheses. Okay, now what are we going to do is to simplify using exponents. So what is 3 squared? It will be 9. Then what is 2 squared? It will be 4. So 3 squared is 9 and 2 squared is 4. So what are we going to do is we are going to copy this. Then we're going to simplify at the right hand side. So now we're going to add both sides by 23 to remove the minus 23 at the left hand side. Since 23 minus 23 is 0, so I cancel this. So 13 plus 23 is equal to 36. So now what are we going to do is to factorize using the perfect square trinomial. So since this is a perfect square, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. Since both are positive, it will be plus. Then copy the exponent of 2. Since the square root of y squared is y and the square root of 4 is 2. Since the middle is the negative sign, we're going to add or place the minus sign here. Then we're going to place exponent of 2. So these are the perfect squares. That's why I was able to factorize using the perfect square trinomial. So we're going to copy 36 here. So now we can identify the center and the radius. So the center is negative 3 and 2 while the radius is 6 because the square root of 36 is 6. Hi guys, we're now in the GeoGebra website for us to graph circles. Okay, so what are we going to do first is go to this calculator or let's say algebra. Okay, we're going to type an example of the equation of the circle. So like this, right? Okay, so as we see that there are points lying on the circle. Okay, so now we're going to go to the tools area to plot the center. Since the equation is x squared plus y squared equals 4, we can plot the center which is located at the origin. So, it is the name of the center, the point A. And what if, if I'm going to plot a point lying on the circle? Okay, so now we're now in the algebra area or the calculator. We can know the coordinates of the center and the point lying on the circle. Now, we're going to type another example. But first, okay, we're going to count the units between the center and the point. So, 1, 2. So, therefore, the radius of the circle is 2. Okay, I'm going to type another example. Here. So, as we see that the circle is bigger. Why it is bigger? Because our R squared is larger than the first example. Okay, so therefore, using the concepts of the standard form of the circle, so our center is 3 and negative 1. So we're going to plot the center. So 
here is the center, which is point C. Okay, so I'm going to plot another point which should lie on the circle. So here. So now we can see that the center is 3 and negative 1 and the point lying on that circle is 6 and negative 1. So can we count 1, 2, 3? So therefore the radius is 3. Okay, so as we see that the center determines where are you going to plot the circle. However, the radius determines the size of the circle. So thank you. Happy learning. Do not forget to click the subscribe button and the bell button. So thank you and God bless and happy learning.